What one idea do you need to accept in order to understand Swedenborg's work? Before diving into the world of spirits proper, we're establishing a fundamental principle, which is that human consciousness exists separate from the physical body. Now clearly there's some more external form of consciousness, given the way he speaks about animals in paragraph 435, but for Swedenborg there's something essentially non-physical about the human mind, which is separated from the body after death. Modern science is busy looking for consciousness in physical matter, and especially within brain tissue. And I think of the work of Roger Penrose and Stuart Hameroff on microtubules. But that's a search Swedenborg already conducted thoroughly in his early scientific career, and so he takes us in an entirely different direction. But what proof do we have that he's right? Swedenborg cites the fact that man continues to live after the death of the body as evidence. And indeed that would be compelling proof if we accepted the notion, which many do not, of course. Nevertheless, there have been many reports of near-death and out-of-body experiences in recent decades following the work of Raymond Moody and others on the phenomenon. But Swedenborg also offers us two experiences which have been reported by others, although he says here that he has only experienced them a handful of times. First, he mentions being withdrawn from the body and refers particularly to the state between sleep and wakefulness known as the hypnagogic state. This has been experimented with by a number of individuals and I think in particular of the psychologist Wilson van Dusen in his books The Natural Depth in Man and The Presence of Other Worlds. And the second evidence is what he calls being carried away by the spirit, which as he describes it is somewhat less dramatic than it sounds. It seems more like daydreaming than astral travel at least as I read it. But then I realise that modern mindfulness actually works on this principle of separation from the physical too. It teaches that our thoughts flow into us from another source. It makes no attempt to locate that source, but only insists that our thoughts do not originate in ourselves, nor are they anything that we can or even should control. And this could never be the case if consciousness were an attribute of the physical body. So I wonder what you think of this idea of consciousness as non-physical. Do you have experiences that either confirm or challenge that notion? We'd love to read your thoughts in the comments. As always, you're welcome to read along with us or read ahead if you prefer. You may have questions you'd like to pose in the comments. Enjoy the journey.